All right, so we spent a little time where we created the free WordPress.com account. We looked at a few settings that are important, and then we've got basically on the left, post, add new. Well, if we do that, don't do this, but if we went to posts, add new, we would add a brand new post, a brand new article to our blog. And then we get an empty screen, which is the best and the worst thing for a writer. It's the best thing because we have a brand new canvas to write something brand new, but it's bad because we have a brand new canvas to, uh, canvas to write something new. We have this brand new empty expanse. What are we going to write about again? And so <clears throat> I'm going to write some notes here in a, uh, in, a, in a file, and I'm going to put my notes at the, end of a, at the end of the day into the network, and I'll remind you where that is in a moment. But I'm going to write some notes here, and you can write notes as well, and I'll give them to you. But some notes here, in general, and we'll get to them again in more specifics, some ideas. Because what you want to, you want to think about a few things um, regarding blogging. Frequency and content. How frequently are you blogging? And so as a beginner, if you're not used to blogging on a schedule, let me say beginner, once per month is good for a beginner. Um, because if you haven't updated your site in a while, this is going to get the ball rolling. As a beginner, once a month is better. As you get more advanced, so intermediate, and if I misspell it, don't worry, intermediate, um, once a week, four blog posts a month. What do you think for advanced? Daily. That's obviously a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of writing. But think about the sites you visit on a regular basis. Do you visit any how-to websites, any financial websites, any parenting websites? Uh, you're visiting a variety of websites that have a blog component to them. They may not obviously be a blog, but they have a blogging component. One of the sites that I like to visit um, is um, browneyedbaker.com. Brown so it's a website about food. And so here, uh, on today's date, Friday things, here's a blog post. Um, just some random stuff on that one. This one yesterday, overnight cranberry eggnog coffee cake. Okay, a recipe from yesterday, the 12th, going back. There's one from the 11th, there's one from the 10th, there's one from the 9th. Every day there's a brand new recipe with amazing photos and text and explanation and comments and social media and tweets and buzz and traffic. So <coughs> this is one of these examples of a blog with a lot of content put out on a regular basis. Very, very regular. Another one that I like. Investor Junkie. <coughs> Financial website. Uh, financial website uh, helping you become a better investor. So they sell a product so that you don't have to do it yourself, but they have educate, reviews, promotions, articles. They don't maybe literally call it blog. These are This is a blog. These are articles. I want to read about um, <coughs> asset allocation. So then six reasons why diversification can be tricky. How to manage risk. Diversify. Retirement planning. What are retirement buckets? So blog posts. So I go read why is diversification tricky? And so I read that post. I have the ability to share on social media. I can subscribe. Um, comment, etc. So back to the notes. As a beginner, once a month. Uh, writing one article once a month on the topic of your of your website or your brand and there therefore when we talk about content okay once a month how much am I writing once a month again as a beginner 
100 words per post. So you're going to see uh, 100 words actually zooms by pretty quickly once you get good at this. Um, if that's the beginner of 100 words, you want to be doing 300 words as intermediate. More words, more quality words, more content, more probability of being found by the search engines. Because you're hitting these keywords, you're hitting the concepts of what people are searching for. You saw that blog post, what is Wheat La Coche? Literally, people search for that. And so there's that article that comes up when people search for that and they read it, they get educated, that brings traffic to the site. Maybe a hundred people visit the site from that link. Maybe one person buys a taco. Great, you got one sale out of a blog post. And that's happening while you, day and night, while you sleep. And so the more you write, the more content is out there to be found. So obviously if you're doing daily 500 words, that's a lot of content you're putting out there. Maybe daily you're doing 100 words, that's okay too. The point is you're putting out content, because daily at 100 words, you're still going to then add up to a lot of content if you were doing daily 500 words. Just slower. <laughs> Regarding uh, Related to content also, what we want to say here, um, is um, relevant, timely content. Relevant. It relates. Your blog should relate to your whole site. You can have the blog as an ancillary or as a sub-page of your site. It can be right on your home page. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It could be, you can have victor.com and you could have then victor.com slash blog, right? It's just a part of your site, but it's relevant. You're writing about stuff that relates. Write about your topic, your niche, uh, related. If uh, that Mexican food restaurant is, is selling Mexican food, then those blog posts should be about Mexican food. They can be tangential, of course. How far off of a tangent? That's not for me to exactly tell you how off of a tangent, but related enough. So we saw in the example of the restaurant, there were articles very related. Here's this food, here's this beverage that we sell. But then also related, here's this event we were at, here's this TV show we were on, here's this um, uh, you know, health initiative we support, food-related things. It's relevant. Write about your topic, your niche. Make sure it's related and timely. And timely just means that, you know, you've, you've written it uh, relatively recently about things that, that matter at the moment. You know, are people still talking about a certain diet anymore? You know, diets come and go. So are people still talking about a certain diet in our case? Uh, do people still care about craft beer? Um, you know, are you writing about things that people would want to read at the moment? And that requires research, that requires seeing the competition. So if you're not also reading your competitors' blog content, that could be hurting you. I'm going to say read up on the competition check what other websites are also writing about. And I'm not saying steal what they're writing, I'm, seeing, I'm saying read what they're writing and see what I can write in my voice, with my expertise, and maybe about something that they haven't uh, hit upon yet. Maybe some sort of trends you're seeing as you see your competitors. This is some, those are some general ideas about blogging, what to blog. There's many ideas of what to blog about. I'll mention a few right here, and then we'll develop more as we, as we take volunteers and such. 
but I'm going to say one one type what to blog I'm going to say uh, types of blog posts or uh, technically blog po posts but we'll just call them articles top lists top five this top ten that bottom four this the best this the worst that so lists where you say any any number doesn't matter top three top ten top thirty top ninety nine whatever any sort of list that breaks it down into small chunks of readable content like this one six diversification overkill five too many accounts four investments don't follow script so the reason for creating posts that are in lists is because this seems to be probably like 700 words or so and you might be very interested to read it from beginning to end but studies show we're getting shorter attention spans and I lost my train of thought no we're getting shorter attention spans we're getting shorter attention spans and therefore let's take advantage of that by writing content that fits that. A, a person might start to read this article and then see the first bullet point and be interested in that and read it and then see the second one, I'm not interested in that, I can I can deal with my emotions. But then they see the third bullet point, that one's interesting, I'll read that. That one, I don't believe that. That one, I'll read that. So lists help break up 700 words into smaller chunks of information that are more digestible. Top lists. To break up long posts into bite-sized pieces. You've probably read one or two or ten posts that are like that, top this, top that, and then at the end there's another one that catches my attention, and I read it another one over here. Um, six important things to consider before investing. Sounds interesting. Let me read that one. So you're hooked on another one that is a, that is a chunks of information. Keep your debts to a minimum. So I read that section. And uh, that's the point of using of writing blog posts about top you know top this, top that. We'll get into specifics in a bit, but here's one type of blog post, the, the list <coughs> post. You can have uh, blog posts that are how-to or tutorials. This would be highly relevant to many people. How to do product photography. Someone that's starting off in that field would love some pointers on how to do that from a pro, especially if you have this experience. You have these experiences that you can write about. You're writing about something relevant that you know about that is your topic, your niche. Obviously, you're not going to write things that you don't have too much experience in. You want to write about things that you have the experience in so that people can then take advantage of them, read them, share them, comment on them, drive traffic to you. How to posts and tutorials uh, can potentially bring you a lot of traffic because people always need to learn something in a variety of topics. How to tutorials. Step by step posts easily shareable. These are things that people will want to share. They want to send over to Facebook or to or via email. Um, and that's getting you uh, that's getting you traffic free attention you have about about posts so I've got um, this bakery Victor's bakery it's fake but I'm writing about the um, the the cupcakes that we sell about them specifically behind the scenes um, the history of the product giving you an insight 
into some aspect of your product or your business or the people behind the business about posts. Educating. Educating people. Why? You're putting out this content again to the search engines that can help you get found. Um, when we actually write the blog posts and we get specific, we'll see how this makes sense more. But again, these different kinds of blog posts are so that you can be found, so that when someone searches how to tie a tie, and you wrote a great blog post with great pictures and a little video, your, your uh, blog post might be on the first page because it's a new, relevant, timely post it also got shared on social media, and it's going to show up higher on the search engines, giving you more traffic. Um, I'm going to say another kind here is a series. A series post. This month we're going to blog about uh, this particular style of cooking, and then next month another style. So this month is California cuisine, next month is Louisiana cuisine, in two months Texas cuisine. So it's a series on a particular topic. Long form on topic series of posts. So let's say you, you have a lot to say, and you, you write a 1,000 blog post. I would say, break that up. You can, you, can ring, you can ring 10 posts out of that, 10 months of content. Take that 1,000 words that you wrote, break it up into 100 words, and it's part one in a series. And now you've got something for this month and the next nine months. Okay, well maybe you want to break it down to 250 words out of those 1,000. You've got four months of content. 250 words, you publish it this month, the next 250, the next 250, and the next 250. Four months of content, and that's a series. So you've developed a long idea, breaking it out over time to bring people back to get return readers. So this is so, some four possible ideas. There's other ones I'm sure that we will think about. Any questions so far? Yes. Good point. Let me back up over here, still under the section of content. I'll put it right here, actually. The more original content, the more better. The more original content, the better. So if you are borrowing content from other websites, that's not enough for you then to differentiate yourself from them. You're giving them free traffic. You're giving them fame. Because you probably you know, took a little piece and then linked back to the original because you want to give a copyright or you want to give credit and such. Um, and so you're giving them back free traffic. You're giving them backlinks, which are very important in modern SEO, which we'll talk about. So the more original content you create, the more possibly other people can link to your content which is much more better, much better. So um, I would avoid as much as possible uh, repurposing content, copying content. It's about original content. And then, yes, we might get burnt out. To do 100 words every month, we might get burnt out. Maybe not now, maybe in 9 months, maybe in 12 months. Uh, oftentimes, there's so many articles out there about that people lose interest in blogging because it is, it is a big endeavor. But as we talk a little bit more about here, what to write about, hopefully that will help. It's a big idea, original content. Yes? And just to connect, the editor or not, if you have your blog, 
is to perhaps query and ask the other blog or just backlink is enough. I used to use some of that, so backlink. What is what would you say just currently? What is the etiquette on, on people using yours as well as you using someone else's content? If you use other content, at least link back. You don't have to go over to them and send them an email and say, can I please link to your article? You, you don't need to link back and ask them, can I use a portion of your article? Because, and I'm not a, an expert in copyright laws and all of that, but there are the aspects of fair use. If I'm going to use one or two or three sentences of another blog post out of a out of a hundred sentences, that's not so bad. But if I use 50 sentences out of their 100 sentences, that's bad. And I can't exactly tell you percentages and all of that. That's always for a court to decide. But most people want a link back to their website. They don't want you to copy and paste their whole article into your post and slap your name on it. They don't want you to take seven sentences and paste it onto your site and give no credit. What you want to do is you, if you use other people's content, you want to link back. That doesn't mean at the very end of the article simply have a link back. That's acceptable. But better is that as you write the post, and when we do it together we'll see that, as you write the post, you weave in the text in there, you weave links in there that then take you back to the original content. So links back to the original content is always better than nothing. Um, that might protect you against any you know, copyright violations and so forth. So it is useful to link to other sites, and we'll explain a little bit better why later, but um, link back to the other content is good. For others linking to your site, you have to decide. Do you care that three out of the seven paragraphs of your site show up exactly the same on another site? Probably. So then you want to reach out to them and, then, and say, <clears throat> thank you for using my content, please link back to it. Then they might be a spam site and not care, and there's not much you can do about it. You have to realize, everyone has to realize, anything you put online First of all, it's probably going to outlive its usefulness. And second of all, it's going to be spread out out there, and you're not going to have much control of it. You're not going to be able to lock down your picture so that only you can see it. If you delete a copy, maybe there's a copy elsewhere. The search engines keep copies of most of the stuff online, if you didn't know that. They keep cached versions. Even if you delete your site, there might still be a copy of your site up there for six months, uh, or some other time limit. So really, anything you put online, you have to be comfortable that is that anyone is going to see it, number one, and number two, anyone's going to steal it. If you're not comfortable with any of that, don't put anything online. Unfortunately, that's blaming the victim, but that is the way how it is online at the moment. I can right-click and copy anything on the internet. And even if right-click is, dis right is disabled, I can go into the code, and I know where to look in the code to take what I want. So many people know how to do that too. Don't assume that your stuff is safe online. But most people are, are, are fine with that because it's a way of traffic. And um, let's say you do have your pictures up online. Make sure you put a watermark. Make sure you put your, your link to your website in the corner. If someone does take that picture, they can. it'll still have your original text on it. And yes, if they have any Photoshop skills, they know how to crop. Even if you don't have Photoshop skills, you can crop pretty easily. So again, you have to be, you have to, you have to live with the idea that your stuff is going to get passed around and, and, and stolen. Worst case scenario. Um, that mm -hmm. actually happened to me. I was well, sort of like a blog that was Unpublished. But anyway, um, he said something about link back, which I didn't know then because I was like complaining. But I think it said, could you link it back to me or something like that? Do they understand that terminology? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty common term. Uh, we have we have link back. We have backlink. 
we have inbound link, incoming link, just link, different marketing material calls it different things, but it's just a link back to your website or a link from your website back to the original website. And with SEO, this is one of the important things. I want links back to my website. We'll talk about how to, how to, how to get those as we start writing our posts and such. But just keep that in mind. I want links back to my website. It's traffic back to my website. So what we'll do as we're going to wrap up the day, we're going to take volunteers. If you would like to tell me, to tell the class, what your business is, what your company is, what you're doing online, I'll write it here. Together we'll think of some ideas, but maybe just simply looking at here, top lists, how-tos and such, maybe that's giving you some ideas. But if any volunteers, you know, what's your website about, what do you want to blog about, and we'll talk about it a bit. Yes? I'll sure. Okay. I, I have two businesses with websites. One, no problem taking things to blog about. It's a problem. My other one is a big problem, not a problem for me because I find it fascinating, but most people don't think so. I have a tax practice. Tax practice. So I'm thinking up to you guys, what in the world would make you want to do my tax That's a very good way to put it. We have here. Would you find interesting? Maybe you actually, I mean, would you be so desperate that you have to pay a tax that you can blog to entertain? <laughs> Educate yourself. I can think of all kinds of stuff to put out there, but is it something you would like to comment over here? Yeah, I actually read about tax for some reason. So, um, the ones that catch my eye are usually the top news deductions, um, anything about deadlines coming up, um, anything you need to get out with, anything about especially the sort of care apps that came out. Um, so that, that's, that's something that's something I've been Comments over here. Um, specific to Art Riot, how uh, Coverage California and Payne, the one that owned none of it on the market page, how that rolls out when you sit down with the tax person. That's, what you that's disagree? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, changes on um, um, how the law, uh, the same sex marriage law, uh, that's the fact that people that they have to deal with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and how they would change, change the way that it was written. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. We've got lots of ideas right here. Tax practice, business. Um, this is a good uh, activity that I like to do because you know we're in our own bubble. We have our own business. We know what we're doing. But how do we get that across in a blog? If we're realizing blogging is important, how do we reach people? Right here, we're going to ask each other that. If you have ideas, we're going we're gonna to help each other. So yeah, look at these. We can write, these are a variety of topics. How can we then merge some of these into these? I could easily think of these, many of these to be a series. As tax time is coming in, when do people start thinking about taxes? In January, usually, even though you should be doing it earlier. No. So if you, if you, <laughs> Exactly. So as the year is ending, as the year is, the next year is beginning, you know, you start this series and then also share it on, on social media and such. And um, you start putting them out and then in your blog post you're going to be saying, and tune in next time for part two. You know, maybe make it obvious. This will be a multi-part series. You don't know how many. Just say, stay tuned for next part, part of our series and so forth. So 
Uh, let's move on. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else would like to say, well, what, what ideas can we give you? Yes. I like what you did. I got really well, so I want to take advantage. Sure. Um, so I do, I'm, I'm a wellness coach, but my product line that I carry is basically um, nutritional supplements, personal care, and um, uh, like weight management and things like that. And so um, I can talk about the product and I can talk about recipes and different things like that, but I fall in that category of supplements might be a little bit too expensive and people don't necessarily want to buy. So what would you do? So comes in so it comes in a lot of things. So what would you guys say? Uh, what would entice you to read? Number one, read about the blog, and the number two, buy. Yes. Articles on what's uh, bogus and what's not, what to look for in supplements. Not even just your own, but in general. They get a lot of them that are, you know, snake and boil, you know, and stuff. But what, what, and your recommendations? Contrasting your product with the competitors, why yours is better. So compare contrast blogs. Um, you might see something that's got a lot of attention, and then you compare and contrast it and say, actually, if you read the label, this has good old titanium dioxide, and ours doesn't. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, I think I will go more on this line going uh, about education or the supplement, what what are they for, what they do, what is better for you. Hmm. How about the new supplements? There's always new things coming out. Um, like a Kai berry and some other stuff, like what are those? What do they do? Are they fat burning or are they Pre-workout, post. So, what are the trends? trends? Why are they trends? Okay. How about uh, smoothie supplements? You know, kind of what you can put in that that might suffice for supplements. Which go well in smoothies? A home remedy or home making your own rather than purchasing. But then they won't go to your site to purchase through. Well, that's okay. I can throw in some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, there you okay. go. Yeah. Just a smoothie on free energy workout or your own yeah. option or something. Free recipes. recipes. Just own the outright live the big pharma just putting out and that supplement and how they're patenting the supplement industry because they can patent natural products so they really really are you know just reward crush them. The only thing about that is that you also have to back it up with a lot of a lot of science. If if they're gonna be saying one side of the argument with their claims, you need to also be able to back it up. Real careful on that too. Remember this whole industry this whole industry is always the claims here have not been evaluated by the FDA and blah 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 blah. So remember all of that part. Good ideas. Anyone else? Study the FDA and how they rank it, what, what, what the FDA is. So, and FDA. And how the FDA is making big up of employee, ex employees and big money. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> just look them up. Google anybody on the FDA board and they'll see what they all work for big money or currently are working for big money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Top, these could be turned into top lists. You could be do a long form series. You could do a long form series, the top five smoothie recipes. And then this week is this one recipe, and then the next week is another one. You're counting down to the best one, which just happens to be one of the best sellers that you have, let's say. Um, Health food stores, natural restaurants, Maybe reviews. This is something tangential. Maybe. You know, uh, reviews, or if you're if the product is found in any of these health food stores, or if they use them in any restaurants, um, so you know, local eatery, local healthy eatery reviews. 
Yes. And then just logistically, if she were to go to the local RP eatery and review, would she, I mean, I guess it would be based on her review. If it was positive, she may well say, hey, manager, by the way, I'm here today taking a couple of photos because I'm filming that review. Or, I mean, when do you let, they just find it because they check, they Google themselves and they find the review on the site or? Yeah. Um, I mean, you work with restaurants, so what would you say? Again, it's it's wide open. I just read uh, yesterday a, a review on that Texcoco restaurant uh, that, that was positive. Usually, they're, they're in, with that client, they're they're pretty much always positive. Uh, so again, the, the etiquette of it is, in a sense, there's no etiquette. You, anything goes, which is good and bad. It's good because it gives you free publicity if it's good. It's bad if it gives you bad publicity. But even bad publicity is some publicity. So um, yeah, it's really up to you if you do want to really contact and reach out to the particular uh, restaurants and such to say, hey, I'm doing this or that. But they do say it's uh, easier uh, to get forgiveness than to get approval. So if you write something positive or negative, that's fine. And then if they don't like it, then you could deal with it. Uh, but if it's good, it's good. Let's move on. Anyone else? Any other volunteers? Maybe to talk about what your website or products are about. Anyone? If not, you still have hopefully some ideas here. I'm going to put this into the network folder in just a moment. But again, we have an we have a possible test audience here. Anyone like to one final person maybe to mention what their site is about? Their blog. Okay. Oh, sure. Art gallery. So, do they do they host different artists, or it's different artists, traditional If you're going to be having events going on in particular art movements, for example, that could be a series that could be done. What is the blog post to, be, to build attention for an event that's going to happen? So writing about the artists being featured there with links to their, to their websites and such, because then you're putting traffic out to them, which could bring traffic back to the gallery. Um, you could do also a series or uh, education. Um, as far as the blog thing you need to one language that says um, this client actually emailed Germany that has international, like, I guess a lot of the clientele has international. Yeah, you need to know. Are they usually um, speaking English together? So would you just put a do you need separate blogs for like one year and one anniversary completely separate? That's a little hard to say because you really need to know your demographics. Your traffic. If you're saying, okay, you have you have a lot of German and Russian visitors, but there's still a common English language between them. Maybe keeping it in English might work. I don't know. Maybe having uh, within the same blog post the English version and or the German version and the Russian version that might help. Uh, maybe it might help to have the website one of them in in German and one of them in Russian. Maybe. I don't know exactly what to say about that, um, so you'll have to you'll have to kind of figure that out. But those are some ideas. Keep it all in on the same blog. You just keep it bilingual. You know, like like uh, most Canadian things are in Ger are in French and English. They're all you know one side is English, one side is, is French. You might want to do something like that on on that, or keep it all one common language, English. I don't know. Depends on your demographics. But based on, on this, what would, what would you guys say? What would you say would be interesting to read about an art gallery that you'd like to come back to read about? Some ideas are... Uh, nice techniques on, on, on art, um, painting techniques. Like some tutorials? Tutorials, tutorials maybe? Uh, you know, not give away the trade secrets of the particular piece, but yeah, tutorials on handling... Materials. Art appreciation, how they look at art. Hmm. About local talent. 
Spot on. Uh, spotlights on, on local talent. So those sorts of ideas. We have three separate separate concepts, tax preparation, uh, nutritional supplements and health and, and art. So based on some specifics here, you could still adapt some of the things we talked about on some of these things over here to some of these over here. Free this, free that. Um, and then based on the top concepts over here, top lists, how to's, about series, you know, about would be the spotlight on artists and such. And then a series, each, each of these could have a series and such. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this, these notes into the network folder. Let me remind you where that is at. If you go to your desktop, you open up computer at the top left. We'll see network location, classroom data drive Z, as in zebra, network location, classroom data. And then inside of there, scroll down to find my folder, which is campus blogging. The syllabus is there, and then I'm going to drop in, uh, let me put today's date on this, blog ideas 2015, 11, 13. Today's Friday the 13th. Anyone, is anyone watching the movies in honor? No. Okay, so uh, there it is there, and what I wrote in my notes is there for you. We're going to wrap up the, the main lecture at this point. When we come back next time, uh, we know a little bit about WordPress. We have some ideas. We have a site. When we come back next time, we're going to log back into the site. So hopefully you save this password and login information. We're going to log back into it next time. I'm going to give you a handout that has bullet points. Do this, avoid that, try this, and then we'll write some together and deal with other things, meta tags, keywords, all of that specific stuff next time. So that's it for the moment. See you next week.